Right, I want to welcome you to a special Anglican TV interview. Most of you have heard the news by now that the GAFCON primates have decided to start a network covering Europe that will encompass other dioceses, uh, including AMIE, which is currently in England. I'm going to read you the second paragraph of the press release. Uh, in June 2020, the GAFCON primates passed a resolution recommending that Andy Lyons be appointed as Bishop of the Anglican Network in Europe, and which is going to encompass two convocations, the American Mission in England, AMIE, and the Anglican Convocation in Europe, ACE, and that Bishop Andy be under the primatial oversight of whoever is the chairman of the primates council for the point of accountability. Now, this is a little confusing because we thought we were just going to go into England. Well, we're actually going to uh, try and retake uh, Europe for Anglicanism and for Christ. And to help explain that, I have uh, two friends of Anglican TV, uh, Philip and Lee, who are going to introduce themselves and talk a little bit about how the structure works and what you can do to help. Yeah, so I'm Philip de Greywater. I'm the rector of the Anchor Anglican Church in Foy, which is in Cornwall in the very far southwest of England. And uh, the Anchor was planted th uh, this time last year in October 19, having left the Church of England because of the repurposing of the baptism liturgies uh, last year. Mm -hmm. Lee, uh, tell us about yourself. Uh, so, yeah, my name is Lee McMahon. I'm the senior minister of Trinity Church in Scarborough. So we got planted in 2017. By God's grace, we're still here. By God's grace, we're a little bit bigger. So that's part of the Anglican mission in England. And then I've got some uh, particular roles within Amy as well. So I'm the planting director and I've become the bishop's assistant of the new convocation bishop. So my question is, why is it so hard to plant churches in England? I mean, you are the mother church. It should be a lot easier. I think uh, there are a number of reasons. Uh, and because it is the mother church, people are very, very wedded to it. Uh, and I think uh, perhaps there are idols with our own hearts. I know I had to wrestle with this about leaving. Uh, there's a position and a respectability and a reputation that comes with being a vicar in the Church of England. Uh, if you think of Jane Austen and all of that sort of stuff, it's all there in the background. And uh, some of those things, he comes with a house and a stipend and a pension. Uh, it's hard to step out. Um, so uh, for those, uh, I'm not saying that uh, those who aren't stepping out uh, are wrestling with those, but I certainly had to. Um, and yeah, there's a cost, but it, uh, you've got to do the right thing to remain faithful to historic Orthodox Biblical Anglicanism. And for, for me, that was stepping apart when the Church of England ch uh, repurposed the baptism liturgies for, uh, to use with transgender uh, transitions. Well, every generation in every continent has its presenting reasons why um, the gospel might be hard to, to hear. Um, in, in England at the moment, uh, there can be some presenting reasons. For example, people um, want to, to live for the moment. They want to seek comfort above all things. And following the Lord Jesus Christ ultimately is going to lead to a better eternity. He will transform your life now, but it's not going to be comfortable. Jesus wants to completely um, um, upheave and transform our, our lives. So there are very presenting reasons why church planting in England might be hard. But at the end of the day, um, we don't really want to be told that we are sinners in need of a saviour and that the Lord Jesus Christ is the unique saviour of all. Um, and yet that's what we have to do. We have to hold that truth out. One of the challenges, of course, is uh, churches of all places should be the ones that are not just holding out, but holding on to the faithful biblical gospel. And that connects with what Philip's saying. Uh, one of our delights about the formation of, of what's just happened through the GAFCON primates, the Anglican Network in Europe, with its convocations, is we have a healthy home which is going to hold on firmly to the apostolic and biblical gospel so that we do have a hope to hold out to the millions of people in england then beyond that who need to know about the lord jesus christ so it's hard ground kevin it is hard ground um, and we feel weak and we feel fragile but it seems to me that god has a track record of using weak and fragile people to achieve great and glorious things well the one place i find more difficult than england 
would be Europe. And so I was interested, encouraged, very happy to see the GAFCON primate said, we're going to uh, also go and, and take on Europe. The last big religious news of Europe was the, uh, the French Revolution. Okay, so this is, this is a, a big step in, in, in my humble opinion to set up, you know, the network there and have the provinces or have the uh, diocese form out of that. So let's explain a little bit of the structure. There's going to be an Anglican network in Europe. How That's right. This, how does this all relate with what already exists in England? And tell me how dioceses are going to be formed out of that. Well, there's a need for a home uh, for all, all sorts of different stories, actually. So there are uh, folk like me who've uh, left the Church of England and we found a temporary home under Bishop Andy Lyons uh, uh, with a much like uh, happened in America. Um, uh, so we've had a temporary home under Canada with Bishop Charlie Masters and we're hugely grateful for that. But just as, as you guys uh, sort of grew up uh, and were able to set up your own structures, um, and uh, so we've been encouraged to grow up quickly by the primates to form our own structures. So uh, the network is there for anyone within Europe under the Jerusalem Declaration to find a home within faithful biblical Orthodox Anglicanism. Uh, and it's a great joy. And we're really uh, thankful to the primates for uh, sort of encouraging us to do that and then authorizing us and endorsing us uh, it's it's uh, it's been a, a joy to to come under their leadership directly, and Bishop Andy will be answering directly to the Primates Council for what goes on in Europe under the Anglican Network. I, I'm well. I am. I'm very very excited about about the structure. I think for a couple of reasons. Let me just say something quickly about the structure. So there's going to be two convocations, and the two convocations, um, the Anglican Convocation in Europe ACE and the Anglican Mission in England AME. Uh, will together uh, be founding members of the Anglican network in, in Europe. So what's all that about? People might think, well, why not just have kind of one structure, get going? Uh, I think there's something lovely about this. So what is a convocation? Simply means a gathering uh, together. Uh, but the way we're using it is uh, convocation read as diocese information. Um, and Anglican network in Europe read as province information. Now, I think this is wonderful. Give me t I'll give you two reasons why I think this is really good news. One, I think this is a beautiful solution that allows people with slightly distinct convictions on some secondary issues, for example, the roles of men and women in, in church leadership, and yet who all subscribe wonderfully to the Jerusalem Statement and Declaration and are committed ultimately to holding up the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a great solution to remain united and allow uh, the thing. I mean, it's wonderful. Nobody has to compromise anything. So I think that is a, that is a beautiful solution. But the second reason, it signals something. It signals intention uh, under God of where we want to be. Um, so we believe that in the, the, the months, the years, the decades to come, uh, we have built a structure so that the two convocations and the network have their own constitution and canons. Now, not everybody is excited about those documents in terms of uh, writing them from scratch, but in God's kindness, um, he's, he's brought people together from around the world to enable three constitution and canons to be written structurally. That is a sound Anglican uh, way of doing things. But what does it do? It signals that this is not just a short term outfit, that we want to be here for the decades to come by God's grace. And let the reader understand, why would you have uh, two dioceses information with an with with a with a province information well this is what we long to grow bigger uh, but we've got good embryonic structures that under god will will be able to 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 be fit for purpose when god in his kindness grows yeah i think there was two things i think i think the two points i wanted to make it is a beautiful way of allowing people to be united and yet distinct mm -hmm. i mean it's really good now i don't want to use the term mutual flourishing because but that's that's a very <laughs> loaded term in um in England, but actually, that it is the proper way of allowing unity and distinction. So you, you are you can be distinct at the diocese level, and you are absolutely united at the provincial level. Um, I think that's actually really, really good. Um, but also, it sends a signal. That's the other thing I wanted to say. It sends a signal of long-term intention that this is not an outfit that is just going to be around for a couple of years. And the difference, of course, with I think one of the big differences. The two big differences between what's happening now and when the FCA was formed in England all those years ago 
And we didn't have an Anglican structure and we didn't have a bishop. And what we have now is we've got proper Anglican structure. So we have three sets of canons and constitutions. Um, and so therefore the leadership structure is clear, um, is very transparent. And we have a bishop um, who is actually leading the way. And that's important. We didn't have that when the FCA was formed. And then you saw what happened. It doesn't work. Um, so I was going to say that, that, that a, I was going to say the signal. I would, yeah. And what a joy to have godly, clear Episcopal oversight. Uh, it's been uh, such a, a, almost a discovery, um, uh, I would say, for me, um, to have a bishop. We pray together uh, as a convocation. Both convocations do, with Andy as our presiding bishop. Every week we open the scriptures together. At least once a month he'll ring up and say, how are you doing? Uh, what can I pray for you? I don't think in 25 years of ordained ministry uh, I've had a diocesan bishop ring me up and say, hi, how are you doing? What can I pray for you? And it's something that we've discovered from you guys in America. Uh, Charlie Masters could not have been more supportive and caring as, as I was uh, stepping out of the Church of England. Uh, and we've learned, I think, from ACNA uh, in particular, um, at this sort of gospel generosity underneath, uh, uh, but united within the Jerusalem Declaration. So um, we're trying to learn uh, and uh, learn uh, um, and put into practice uh, some of the things that you guys have led the way on so that we've got a future and we can offer a home for anyone within the uh, Jerusalem Declaration going forward. And we can hold out the hope of the gospel to a needy continent. So we have 10 years of history now with uh, trying to bring authentic Anglicanism to England and now, and now to Europe. It, it, in succinct ways, tell me what hasn't worked. What have we tried that didn't work in England? And then we'll follow up with what, did, what does work. One size doesn't fit all. That, I think that's the, the simple message. Um, and uh, therefore, to, uh, to have uh, uh, a structure that allows uh, the diversity of uh, uh, within Anglicanism, legitimate diversity, within a clear orthodox biblical foundation that's prescribed, the, the, the Jerusalem Declaration gives us. Um, and so now we've got it. Uh, and we hope that it will will grow, that people uh, will uh, see it and, and want to be part of it. I remember early in the last five years, there was personality conflicts and, and kind of a three streams division going on within uh, the Anglican mission in England. And um, you think this new structure can go beyond all that? Um, I do. I think I... I think it's a very exciting structure because I think as we have worked together at the network level and as we've worked at the convocation level, um, the Lord has been increasing our understanding of each other, our affections for each other and our, our appreciation of the differences. Uh, and yet what I think is really, really vital, and maybe this is one of the lessons to learn, um, you need to have a proper, transparent structure that enables the, the right leadership uh, to happen and also for people to appreciate why these people are leading in the first place and I think that's what we've got I genuinely think that is what we've been missing and um, there's an opaqueness across the world in terms of leadership uh, in different in different organizations the church cannot be opaque in its leadership we need transparency and I think I'm delighted now as I look at the you know not everybody's excited by constitution and canons I know that I'm not stupid okay but if you actually look through um, at each of the convocation levels and the network level, there is transparent clarity about what it means to belong, and that is healthy for going forward. Now, I'm going to ask a silly question here, but one of the shining stars of the ACNA is the new prayer book. Do you, you guys intend to have a European prayer book or an, uh, a, Br a British variety of a new prayer book? Well, I can only speak for uh, the Anglican convocation in Europe. We've uh, said that within the Gafcon family, that any of the uh, uh, congregations in the convocation can use any of the prayer books within the Gafcon family. Uh, so uh, in Foy, we use the ACNA prayer book. It's great, great stuff. It's a, um, so we're happy to continue to use that. You don't have to translate American English into uh, uh, English English. We do have to keep adding you into the words. Yes. 
absolutely good point all right so um i say well not one kevin can you say so it's good to remember that so i think it did take the acna 10 years to write their own prayer book mm-hmm. um, so <laughs> we we do have a little bit of time to do that but from an amy point of view as well it, we do have a prayer book it's called the 1662 prayer book it is it is pretty recognized across the centuries as mm-hmm. being the gold standard of, of anglican prayer book so Absolutely. we're not without a prayer book and um, and so what we want to do is we're, we're properly anglican so therefore that means we're biblical we're gospel hearted but we're liturgical and therefore we want to use what is of of the best but of course remember that we don't want to our danger now is that we forget the millions of people on the continent of Europe who need to know about Jesus. Our danger is that we focus on structures and we focus on internal things. And what we're praying is that the good structures we've got and the healthy worship that we've got uh, will enable us to to witness. Now, we know that in order to be an effective witness, we've got to be proper worshippers. And that's why your question about the prayer book is not irrelevant, because, of course, what we want is to gather together in corporate worship Mm -hmm. in ways that energize us so that we are more effective witnesses. Well, I think it's one of the things we see uh, when the ACNA formed, there were at least six or seven other Anglican entities other than the Episcopal Church still here in America. If I think of my recent history, there are still other Anglican entities in Europe. Uh, are we going to have relationships with them, or are they going to uh, handle themselves with the old guard? Are they going to refer always to uh, the Church of England and and the the See of Canterbury, or are we going to develop relationships with them, or are you going to develop relationships with them as well? Well, that's why Gafcon is so helpful, isn't it? Because it provides the the uh, links and partnership and family for uh, historic biblical Orthodox Anglicans right around the world, and mm-hmm. so. Uh, we're part of the GAFCON family, that the network will answer to the GAFCON primates. And, and so as uh, people connect with GAFCON, so we're going to be connected together. Um, and we look forward to that partnership and uh, to playing our part within in, within the worldwide family. It's it's a, an exciting future in that sense, uh, as uh, we want to proclaim Christ faithfully to the nations, in our case, the nations of Europe. People want to... Where's Bishop Lyons? Well, we've had technical issues. He was going to be the fourth person on the screen here, and I'm going to follow up with him in a separate interview because we, we have to address some bandwidth issues uh, to, to get us both on screen at the same time. Hopefully that will be up by the end of the week, but I hope to have you guys up by Tuesday. Thank you again, uh, Philip and Lee. Uh, if people want to help through prayer and financially, uh, do you have structures where people can give and uh, go to offer prayers. Yeah, so if you uh, want to find anglicannetwork.org, you'll find uh, the website for the, the network, and then uh, that you can also follow through to the individual convocation uh, websites underneath that. Thank you, Lee and Philip, for your time. God bless. Thank you. Thank you.